Hello everybody and welcome to this week's very cool, very special, very pog live stream. Um, this stream is dedicated to Old School RuneScape's potential first new skill, sailing. So as you all know, we have moved forward with sailing as our first new skill to be pulled hopefully by late July. And we're now getting into this really cool and fun process called refinement. Um, which is where we talk about the nitty gritty elements of the skill sailing um, and we shape the design based on your feedback and as an unexpected um, kind of surprise we now have a sailing navigation preview to share with you today and we're joined by mod kieran mod husky and mod nin and mod nin is from our engine team which is super cool hello guys how are you guys i'm fantastic excited Awesome, awesome. Um, did any of you watch Eurovision? Yeah, oh, you bet. I did. I was. I went to one of the shows last week, not the final, but and then watched it. We had a Eurovision party on Saturday. Me and all my friends, we all brought. Uh, we picked. We ruled countries, and then had to bring food relating to that country, uh, which was. Oh, that's a fun one. I got. Uh, yeah, I got Germany, so I brought curry first, and it was delicious. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, Husky, I, I know that you are not necessarily a fan of Eurovision. I'm sure many members of chat probably agree with you. <laughs> Sounds like XP waste. <laughs> so true. Um, let us know in chat, by the way, if you did tune into Eurovision, uh, what you thought about it. I'm very, very curious. Um, I was Team Finland. Like I was like, chat, yeah. chat, 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 all the way. Anyway, um, you're not here wrong. to... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you're not here to listen to Eurovision. Uh, that fun was for, for last weekend. So let's get on with some announcements before we go into a sailing prototype demo for you. Exclamation mark game update. Last week's update saw the release of some much anticipated updates for mobile and Steam, um, offering you ground item indicators and loot trackers. So that's super, super a big deal for mobile. Um, you can read all about it in last week's game update news post. Exclamation mark Discord, if you want to join the new skill Discord, more on that later. Exclamation mark account, so we've actually released a Jagex account survey to get your feedback. Um, whether or not you've given Jagex accounts a try, please let us know your thoughts. And exclamation mark DTBH, that's the new blog that we published about our progress on Desert Treasure 2 and Bounty Hunter, including a really cool survey, more of your favorite. Um, all right, so we have a sneak peek and then we'll get into the demo shortly. Um, so next week, or sorry, this week, you can expect, drum roll please, da -da 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 -da. Thai farm updates, woo! <laughs> We're super excited to um, release these from Pulse 79 um, very, very soon. It'll literally be in this week's game update. Who is booing in the chat? Matt, do not boo this. This is a very anticipated update, okay? <laughs> Uh, I want to see some pogs in chat for this. Um, you're going to get some uh, really, really cool call for Tide Farm. And most importantly, the J mods can now sleep peacefully knowing that you guys will not be spamming us with Tide Farm when messages. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, look forward to that this week. It's good. It's genuinely a meaningful update that changes the uh, overall now. I think getting wines of Zamorak through skilling and not telegramming is a viable method. Sighing. Ooh. All right, enough with that, guys. We are here for sailing. We are here to create the hype. We are here to talk about navigational mechanics. So um, we've been waiting to talk to you about this. Um, the engine team has been working on some very, very cool stuff. Mod Nin is here on behalf of the whole of the engine team. And let's roll the tape and get into some questions. Hey, all. I'm Mod Nin joined by mod Elena to give you a first look at our early exploration into sailing tech. As you hopefully know by now, the old school team is working on a brand new skill and shaping it with the community during refinement. Sailing was taken forward as the first skill we'd like to refine further, so our first step will be nailing down the navigational mechanics of sailing. Before we get started, please be aware that this demo is purely a technical showcase. There are no gameplay mechanics here, and the art is far from final, 
but this video is intended to show you more about the tech and challenge some of the misconceptions players might have around what is technically possible for us to do. So let's jump into it. Boats are a familiar concept in old school. They're all over the place once you start looking, from tiny rowboats to Fremenic longboats to huge merchant vessels that travel continents. You've seen them, you've boarded them, you've smuggled rum on them, so captaining them shouldn't feel out of place as a skill you could master. Sailing in old school needs to feel well integrated, intuitive, and familiar, and that's where our technical exploration started. We already have boats, we just need to make them move. Here you can see a small boat with a body and a sail, and a player stood inside. That player is able to do regular interactions while on the boat, and see other players doing activities on the dock. This player is also in control of the boat, and can use point and click movement to traverse the waters. Please note, this movement and control scheme are not final, but we're using it here to demonstrate how a player can be part of a moving entity. That boat's a little cramped though. Let's give our guy a bigger vessel. This one's got quite a bit more room. Maybe to carry a treasure chest, or some fishing supplies, or enough space to bring a pet. Maybe this boat is a bit more durable, or can carry more cargo. The specifics of what utilities boats will have is not decided yet, but they can contain interactable objects like anywhere else in the game. We also think sailing could make for a fun group activity. We want to let you invite your friends aboard so you can sail the high seas together. On even larger ships, you might need a whole crew working together to man the cannons, hoist the sails, keep lookout, and steer safely through the waves. We're able to have groups of players aboard boats, which could open up lots of gameplay opportunities for multiplayer sailing content. What did you guys think? We'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below, or if you're watching this live, tell us in the chat. We'd once again like to say that this video footage is purely a technical demo. The core gameplay details, art, rewards, basically everything that makes a skill a skill is still to come. Knowing how navigation works at its core is really important as it feeds into all the other aspects of the skill. We know how important it is to ensure that navigation feels fun, engaging, and intuitive across all devices. So, now that you're able to visualize yourself on a ship with your homies, what kinds of feedback do you want to send our way? Wow! That was super, super cool. Um, what did you guys think? Absolute pog! It's an absolute W. I don't even want to say it otherwise. <laughs> you ain't getting it. This is so worth emphasizing how early this is. Um, first thing, like this is, uh, you know, a handful of days of effort have gone into getting us to this stage. But my God, is this like for us? I think we feel like this is now. The possibilities are endless. What do we want to do with this, and so on, essentially. Uh, but gosh, it's it, it's like it, it is ridiculous. <laughs> And exciting to see boats, big boats moving with players on them, seeing other players on the shore, on the real map and everything. For us, that was a, that was a, a huge challenge to, to get that to get that going. Um, and I think it's yeah, we're, we're buzzing. <laughs> I think it's the yeah, shot. yeah, it's it's. I'm um, I'm happy to see like positivity in the chat. It's like important for it to feel old school, and I think that demo kind of captures it like you see that boat that looks like one of the boats from Port Sarim actually moving through the water that's really cool um the players moving around on it like it looks and feels like old school it feel it looks like it plays like old school so yeah buzzing it was really exciting when we saw that for the first time like during the game jam when we we're just like because back when we were think thinking about all these skill pitches and we're talking with Elena and I'm like actually we don't know What's our perfect world vision? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love to be able to see what's happening on the boat and 
move around on the boat and control the boat. We were like, how oh, is this going to work? Are we going to need like a picture in picture kind of thing? Do we need to talk about like we were talking about WASD and or what if you, we just turn the player into the boat? Is that simple? And to me, this was like the perfect outcome. This would be it working as if like, like if I could have had it work anyway, this is how it would have been. And we were just like, ah, we don't know if the tech's possible. Can we do it? And then, well, engine team delivered during game jam. It, it, it looks really good from a from a tech perspective, uh, and that's where I'm most excited. I think uh, all the disclaimers on the video about art, gameplay, everything is just this is just about the idea that players can be on a boat doing stuff while the boat is moving, and that is actually really exciting to me. Yeah, for sure. I'm seeing some comments in the chat about the, the art style and things like that. Like we have not dedicated um, a significant amount of art resource into this demo. Um, this was literally purely to show you that it was technically possible because there are a lot of misconceptions about the skill and whether this would be technically achievable. And now that we know that you can not only have, you know, a boat in the open world moving it around yourself you can also have people on your boat um, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail in the question so this from a tech point of view i think is is massive it really helps you to visualize the skill and now hopefully players will be able to give us a lot more feedback um targeted feedback to be like can you change this can this be fixed to work this way etc whereas before it was really really difficult for people to imagine themselves on a boat um, because the kinds of stuff that you've done in-game already um, don't really involve you necessarily being on a boat, driving it yourself, navigating, etc. So we are planning to publish a blog uh, sometime this week. Um, and this Q&A is going to be focused on asking some immediate questions. So let's begin. Uh, Mod Nin, can you talk us about what the engine changes are and explain the new tech? Yeah, so I guess first, let's... Let's like define like what the difference is between engine and content, because um, people are always like, "Ah, that needs engine work." When we can't get engine work, we can't get engine work. Um, so the the engine is basically a set of like gameplay agnostic systems um, that the game content that then gets built on. So, you know, you need a model drawn to the screen. The engine will draw that model to the screen. Doesn't care what it is, or the game needs some scripts to run. The engine doesn't care what those scripts are, but they'll make them run. Um, so anytime, anytime someone's like, "Oh, that needs engine work," it basically what it means is we need to go and like change one of those systems, or in this case, in this case, like add a new system. Um, so yeah, and and what this is is uh, a way for us to draw an area of the map that exists like somewhere else in a place that we've dubbed the boat dimension. Um, somewhere else in the game world. So we're basically like superimposing a map that exists like off in the void over where a boat should be in the real world. And that gives you this um, this effect where it looks like there's a boat in the water. Um, and that's, I think it, as um, Husky was saying, it's like that's kind of how you want sailing to look. You want sailing to look like the boats that already exist, except they're moving. And you can run your little your player around on them. Um, what what it would be like quite disappointing is if we just like turned your player model into a boat. Um, that would probably feel a bit naff. So yeah, going like the extra step, getting the system in place from the engine side to be able to draw a full boat moving across the ocean um, was uh, where we wanted to start exploring. Very, very cool. I love the explanation of a boat dimension. <laughs> um, could you just kind of highlight what consequences this could have for the rest of the game? So does this tech has to have to be specific to sailing or could you see it applying elsewhere in the game potentially? Uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, like I said, the engine is generally gameplay agnostic systems and this is no exception. This is just draw an area somewhere else. Um, some of the ideas we've had floating around is you could have like a, a boss fight that's on the back of a dragon. Like you're standing on the back of a dragon fighting something as that flies around the entire game map. So you're like flying over Cathabi while you're on top of a dragon doing some boss fight. That could be super cool. Um, so yeah, there's there's probably quite a lot of things that we could do with this. Um, we could have proper like moving scenery and like cool kind of visual effects in, in boss fights. Uh, yeah, all sorts. Very, very, very cool. Um, 
And can I just clarify as well, this is still open world gaming. So all of the stuff to do with the boat dimension, everything like that, you are still looking to make sailing an open world skill. Uh, yeah, do you want to take this one, Husky? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is literally on the game world. We expect you to see other ships. Like the fact that someone was fishing and saw the gameplay that was happening on the on the on the boat is really exciting. Um, yeah, absolutely no nothing for this calls for instance. And the whole ship world thing or boat world or whatever you want to call it is just the idea that we can have a collection of entities, scenery, players, like items on the ground, be like something that is transmitted to the game world and moving as a single entity. That is that is literally all this is for a tech demo. I think I still see a lot of chat in like, oh, like how ma how does this matter for gaining XP and and what is this going to work? And it's like, well, th those are those are great questions that we'll cover in core gameplay, which is like two weeks from now. Right now, we were bombarded with a ton of player questions, being like, why are you doing core gameplay first when we don't know how we're going to navigate a ship at sea and how that's going to feel? So we're like, yeah, actually, let's let's do navigation first. You're right. Let's cover how we envision you moving around at sea and what that impact that that sort of has on the player and then let's move into core gameplay things like how you gain xp from doing the skill the actual activities you'll be doing that kind of thing um just a reminder to people that the whole intention of the sailing design isn't to say here is our full design of sailing boom go read this novel right we want to bring players along the way get feedback as we're going along and just sort of build up to this final finished uh, product and design, which you guys will then vote upon uh, at some point in the future. So yeah. Awesome explanation. Uh, I kind of hope that uh, over the course of this journey, anyone who's like, well, sailing isn't a skill. And it's like, well, we haven't got to explaining how it can be a skill yet. I think the core gameplay is probably the biggest part that will hopefully turn a lot of people. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're laying down this like foundation or how you even like do the basic interactions on the sea. And then we can really get into the meat of the skill. Awesome, yeah. I've seen some questions about collision and ship customization. We'll probably cover that in the later questions, but just to let chat know, like I've seen your questions. Don't worry, we've got that in mind. Um, right, so Montoski, can you explain how players can expect to move their ship? Um, I know that we saw it on the demo, but just having your explanation and expertise. Um, and as well, can you clarify whether players will be able to freely walk around on their boats? So when we were looking at the tech demo, I think one of the gameplay decisions that Mod Nin had made was that you could just click on the water to move the ship. And then you click on the, on the ship to move on the ship. And that raised a lot of questions for us in dev where we were thinking, how does that work in multiplayer? Do you have like an assigned person who can move it? Is that a little weird? Um, what happens if I want to move to the tile right on the edge of the ship and I accidentally misclick and now my ship moved? So from a gameplay perspective, we would expect the player to navigate to the wheel of the ship. And then once they're sort of locked in with the wheel, they're able to, to move the ship to the coordinates at sea. And then other players can sort of do other stuff. Or if you want to go manipulate the sails or do other things, you would leave that sort of navigation mode and then move over to that entity. One thing that was really important for us when we were reading feedback and seeing like how players imagine this feeling old school and feeling like a skill was the idea that you're actually going and interacting with the things individually on the ship and not controlling them through an interface uh, and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's still going to be point and click to move. We're not really looking at anything like WASD or like interface to sort of navigate things. And I think the only question that kind of has come up uh, from sort of the Discord channels that we've been looking at is the idea of perpetual momentum. Obviously, if you're having to go back to the ship wheel every time you need to click, is that going to get too tedious? And we've just sort of said that perpetual momentum is something we'd like to look forward uh, to introducing as like a, an upgrade space as you get a larger ship. If you can install some sort of thing that can allow for perpetual momentum, that kind of thing. But we don't know exactly the specifics of how that's going to work yet. It's just something we're open to because as your ship gets larger and more complex, um, you will got, are probably going to want to have to do more things than just navigate it. So, yeah. Fantastic. I love that explanation. Um, so we've confirmed basically no, um, nothing other than point and click, really. There will be, it's mainly point and click, and then you navigate to your wheel um, to make sure that you're kind of locked in so that you don't end up misclicking. Um, Kieran, I think we've already touched on this, but... Could you kind of give us your view on why it was so important for the team to look at navigation and how important it is 
to the sailing skill. Yeah. Well, I think, I think simply put, it's very hard to go deeper into gameplay unless you know how players are even moving the bloody boat, right? <laughs> how can you come up with all these other things until that's understood? So it's a foundational piece, like like uh, Nin and Husky have said. Uh, but also, like, it is one of the most common bits of scepticism and feedback we've seen from, from players. We can't imagine how boats would work. Is it just going to look a bit tacky? You just get transmogged into a little robot or whatever? Well, no, <laughs> is the answer to that. And this is this is the, that proof that this is why we felt it was really important to look at this properly, understand what is possible with our engine. You remember when we were talking about it, when we were even looking at the three skills, one of the big things we constantly mention when it comes to refinement is we're going to need to look at how do boats work. This this is that step. Essentially, anything you can do on land, you could do on a boat. And it can move through the world, in the real world. And that, to me, means the possibilities, gameplay-wise, really are endless. Yet it feels real. It feels like it'll play quite like old school, point and click movement, run around your ship. It's not going to feel overly different, which is awesome. And so I think it's really good to get that sense of, yes, sailing is a part of this game. It is part of this world. And I love that clip of the the guy fishing on Catherby Beach while somebody else goes past on their boat because that, to me, sets quite clearly like how properly part of old school this is. It is part of the world. You can be going doing something on your boat. Maybe you're fishing on sea or, or whatever. Or you're just training sailing by some gameplay. And you can see the other people on land fishing lobsters on Karam Japir or whatever it is. That's great. There's a lot still to work out, right? The, this is not to say this is done. This is just that proof of concept to say we can do it like this. Brilliant. Now the shackles are off. Let's go and work out how the skill works, etc., etc. And we wanted to make sure, like, because we saw the feedback all the time. Like, is sailing just going to be like that section of um, Bone Voyage, which is a pain? Or is it going to be like fishing trawler? No. It's much, much better than that and feels much more like it's a genuine interaction you can do in game and it's not hidden behind an interface or whatever. Yeah, it's really great to give players a visual that isn't what they've currently seen in game for sure. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the feedback. Um, so please do keep letting us know what you think. Um, can we talk about the tech again? So um, anyone can take this. Is it going to be possible, just clarify, that you will be able to have other people on your boat and are you already starting to think about the kinds of possibilities for group content on boats yeah hell yeah <laughs> it, on, it makes sense right it would be such a it would be such a missed opportunity if we as an mmo like a, like a big sandbox mmo added boats that you couldn't like sail around with other people especially given like how big the boats in the game are like the ones that you see it's like i mean yeah, get a crew together, go sailing. There were you. There was a clip in the the demo that showed <laughs> like four people running around a boat, um, and there was like, you know, it looks a little bit awkward because one of them runs upstairs, and you know you can't see people upstairs in old school. You can only see people who are on the same floor as you. Um, but you know that's something we can fix. Um, yeah, absolutely. Woo, big W. Um, and do you think at this stage other people might be able to? help you steer the boat and influence the way that it moves or do you think that there are going to be passengers like what are your early thoughts on how other people might interact with the boat are they just gonna kind of i think what husky was saying kind of covers it really like i think the player who goes up to the big wheel or depends on the type of ship right but some entity on the boat will get control over the ship's movement um in terms of which direction it's going and, and so on that Maybe we'll have things like if you're in a group, you need, maybe you need to give permission to somebody else on your boat. Like, who knows? There's lots of little details like that. But in theory, somebody else on the boat could go up to the wheel, take over, say, I'm the captain now, like you just did in the chat. <laughs> Look at and me, I'm the captain now. The <laughs> yeah. but, but we're also conscious <laughs> of like multiplayer is awesome. And when it comes to stuff like, hey, maybe in 2000 and 2027, we had a raid that's at sea and you, you have to go on with your team at, on the boat. That might feel a little bit, that, that feels very suitable for multiplayer. 
But do you want your core training stuff for sailing to be multiplayer? I think probably not. Maybe as an option. But we are conscious a lot of players like do like playing the game solo as well, and we don't want to hide like best XP rates and so on behind playing with other people, for example. So that's all stuff that's going to be thought about when we go into gameplay. Where does multiplayer shits come into it? Um, what about NPC crew? Like, that might well be a part of it. But also, I like what somebody else said in the chat. It's like, can I just pay noobs to crew my ship? Who knows? I totally <laughs> right. That could be part of the ecosystem and how we really love that proper MMO aspect of it. So, who knows? Yeah, I'm just, I'm imagining now just like a a, a raid where you, like, five boats come in that all have like four players on them and you've got this crazy 20 person like raid out in the middle of the sea that'd be <laughs> ridiculous but technically feasible so that's really awesome possibilities are endless um okay let's talk about pathing so we haven't really touched on that as part of the demo could you guys explain how you imagine pathing to work um so, on you go Go for a husky. Okay. Uh, so something that we said right from the get-go is that the sort of way that players move just isn't necessarily going to be appropriate for ships. Like, imagine if your ship could just 180 suddenly face the other way and, and turn back quickly, right? That I know that, like, realism video games don't necessarily go hand in hand and there needs to be a line somewhere, but that feels like something that would just feel really jarring, right? So we would want players to be able to sort of have their ship travel in an arc to get to a point like more slowly like like you might expect a, sh a ship to work uh in, in the real world uh so that's something that we're, we're quite intent about but also the normal player pathing algorithm it, it for those like who, who sort of know it you kind of just go in a straight line and then like diagonal moving to finish off your getting to your destination usually um which kind of would feel strange in a big open sea that didn't have many things to sort of like block and interact with you just always see ships doing that whereas in the open world that's kind of hidden right because you'll occasionally have to navigate around a tree or a rock or a fence or a wall or around a corner it, it just it's kind of like sort of hidden behind the scenes with all that so we would very much like to have that more general sort of arc to get there and slow sort of steering and i mean correct me if i'm wrong Nin, but that's something that you guys in Engine have been sort of backing from the start and saying, yeah, that's something that you guys would like to do and, and very possible. Yeah, yeah. It's basically just pathfinding with extra steps. Um, it will be more complicated than player pathfinding, obviously, but uh, one thing that Old School does really well is all the systems are fundamentally quite simple. Um, and we'd keep it that way for the sailing pathfinding. But, you know, it would have a few extra steps. Very, very cool. I think the... um, we... Sorry, Cussie, you go ahead. I was going to I think you go, because you were going to say the thing I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to ask about um, the Lithium, uh, the Reddit submission, basically. I think the, the user was called Lithium Potassium. I do apologize. I'm going to double check the name because I was rushing around uh, when I was. Was Lithium Potassium? Okay, great. We saw a really cool uh, Reddit submission um, by Lithium Potassium. Take a look at this. This was their suggestion for a pathfinding, and I, I wanted to ask a question just as a talking point. Like, was this something that you were keen on taking further as inspiration? I think Absolutely. so, yeah. Think... Like, the, the, the limitation that it has is the boat can only turn 45 degrees every tick. Um, and that just kind of... It's, it's a very simple, like change but it adds like a very kind of real effect where you now have this big turning arc um we've been talking since the start of the skill is like boats can't turn like players that can't be the case it would look ridiculous um so yeah having that arc maybe having like some amount of acceleration and deceleration so you don't just like kind of just start going at this consistent speed um all these kind of things, I think, would add a lot to the feel of sailing a boat. Some husky, did you want I to think add anything? Even more so with the, um, I was just gonna say, even more so with the bigger boats. I think, like, with a little rowboat like this, actually, I'd say you get away with it better. But when you're on a massive, like, Ports of Rim style sailboat, it would look absurd if that just turns on the spot. 
Yeah, for the um, for the demo that that we put together, uh, we didn't change any of the pathing at all. It's just using like normal pathing. But what we did do was make the speed at which the boat like visually turns really slow. Um, so even though that boat is kind of doing like a immediate diagonal or immediately changes directions because it rotates so slowly it kind of looks all right like without us even doing anything we didn't show it off in the in the demo but without us really doing too much it did feel kind of all right and we'd go and do some extra steps like this and we you could get it to feel like pretty nice i think you've both said words that are a particular word that's really important which is feel so this is something that, like, while this grid that we're looking at is very, very particular in exactly how it works, what is really important is that it feels good once we're on a ship. So we could start with implementing exactly this in the demo, and then if it feels really bad, we'll try and change it or do something else. Um, it's something that we can only really talk about on a theoretical level until we actually try and implement it. And I think that this is something that is probably going to get a lot of player feedback, because uh, assuming that the skill gets greenlit and moves on and we can have beta servers where we get players to sort of test and give us feedback on all this stuff. Um, we imagine that one of the biggest things we'll get is, is less going to be about like, hey, I think this meta is very powerful for this particular level. I think what we're probably going to get actually is, hey, like I think boats feel either really good, but I could change it this way, or hey, even if they feel really bad, but these are things that we changed. Because I think we are not releasing the skill unless navigating the ship at sea feels good. Because that is that is the biggest, most core part of this skill. Absolutely. Um, amen to that. We really want it to feel intuitive, um, engaging. And as Husky said, um, we're looking at a green light pole sort of around late July. If that then passes through, we would then be working on a beta, which uh, we would then take your feedback about this kind of stuff. So it's not absolutely set in stone. We have the demo and the blog um, about navigational mechanics um, this week. We'll give you a bit more information, um, but this is still we'll still work with players on this. Like it has to feel right, um, and we welcome constructive feedback on it. Um, speaking of feel, oh, yeah, sorry, Husky, you go ahead. I would say one thing that was shared, I just saw it, was the, it was like uh, a player had said, suggestion for a lunar spell that rotates your boat 180 degrees. So like you just cast a spell and it'll flip your boat. Um, and I don't know whether that specific idea is a good one or a bad one, but the idea that we, ha this isn't just sailing in traditional old school RuneScape, right? This isn't just, sorry, in like the traditional world. This isn't like, you know, early hundred century sailing where we have to live by everything that the real world does. This is a fantasy MMO, low fantasy albeit, that has potential to have integration with magic, potential to integrate with technologies that exist in, in our current world, you know, dwarven technologies or Fremenic seer technologies to be able to see weather stuff. So the idea that we can sort of circumvent sort of expectations as you level up the skill, upgrade your ship to get additional features is like a really cool thing that I think we haven't even explored fully, right? The idea that we ask how old school, how sailing works in old school RuneScape. But the, the, the next logical question is, how does being in old school RuneScape directly impact some of the things that we can do with sailing, like as the player progresses through the skill? Because I, I remember seeing a really janky Reddit image that was like, oh, black dragon hide sails and all this. And I'm like, well, actually, if you're sailing to fight a dragon, you might want some sort of black dragon hide sails that don't just get breathed on fire. So I don't know. I think that that sort of integration with the this sort of whole game world is just like a really exciting thing. And all that super I downline, absolutely right? love that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I absolutely love that. Um, I really, really love that. Um, okay, let's talk about camera controls. I've seen it pop up a bit in chat. Um, Nin, can you take this one? So how do you imagine, can I also combine this question with render distance? Because I've also seen that pop up. Um, so how do you imagine camera controls, uh, render distance view, working with sailing, because obviously a ship is going to take up a bigger portion of your screen than um, you perhaps would otherwise. So if you can just talk us through that. Yeah, so if we start with render distance, um, it's something that's obviously on on our minds. Um, we have the Steam and mobile clients, they have an increased render distance at the moment. Um, Obviously, everyone who's playing on Runelight 
hopefully you're using the GPU plugin and you're bumping the render distance up because it makes the experience quite a lot better. But in vanilla Java, uh, it's kind of capped to that very short render distance. Um, that is obviously something that we're aware of. And in that last example, the boat that we used was kind of massive um, and does take up quite a lot of the screen. Um, so it's not something we've got an answer for like right now, but it's something that we're very, very aware of. Um, as for the camera itself, uh, I guess when you're controlling the boat, your camera is going to be centered on the boat. And if you're controlling your player, then your character will be centered on your player as you walk around the boat. That's uh, where we'd like to get to. Um, the, it gets kind of funny when you have when you're on a boat and your boat is actually rotating, but your camera's focused on your player. Uh, so we'll have to figure that one out. That gets a little bit confusing and disorienting, but I imagine we can fix the camera to the boat rather than the, the world. So that's not too much of an issue. Um, and then one of the other discussions we were having was about, um, let's say you had a crow's nest in your ship and you wanted to send someone up there with a telescope so they could look out into the distance. Um, that's probably something that we could we could manage to do. Um, you know, we could put we could put the camera like a little bit further down the world and kind of smoke and mirrors past some engine limitations to make it feel like you're looking into the distance. We could definitely do things like that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of ideas floating around. Um, yeah, happy to hear people's thoughts on that. Awesome. Very, very good explanation. Um, can I ask another question? So um, size of ships and the type of ship that we'd like to offer players. Um, Husky, can you talk us through that and potentially ex explain how navigation might change based on what size your ship is and what type of ship it is? Maybe touch on customization as well, if you can. Yeah, so it was kind of skipped over in the demo if you noticed uh there was like a really small ship and then a, a large a slightly larger one than a, than a massive one and right now for our uh navigation design we've sort of said we're gonna have three tiers of ship like sort of rough tiers of ship i could imagine maybe a a scale between them as you upgrade right that you know but let's just go with a, a three tier system for now you have small ships large ships and colossal ships so small ships from a navigation perspective would be like your kind of smaller rowboats, maybe with like a sail. It's supposed to be a very simple solo player based experience. And I don't say solo as in you can't have your friends on. I mean, the complexity of navigating this specific ship is designed around one person being there. Uh, a large ship would be a complex solo experience. So still doable solo, uh, probably. So if a small ship's maybe like four by three-ish size, a larger ship we've kind of got pegged in the like six by 10 ish size. These are just ballpark sizes to give an idea of scale. Uh, and then a colossal ship is a complex group experience. Uh, and again, not saying solo players can't do it, just this is how the complexity of operating this vessel uh, is designed around being. Uh, one thing that we've come up a lot, and Kieran touched on it was, oh, well, if I need a group to have this large ship, that I want to play solo. Well, we're going to look into things like NPC crewmates. Like we love the idea of building and customizing and like a sort of NPC crew to help you, that kind of thing. Uh, but the different ships can all, we all want to make them feel very different. Uh, we can play around with ship speeds, turning speeds, sort of render distance, kind of to give them all a different feel. Uh, but I think one of the biggest things that will change how they feel is that as you just sort of have a larger ship, you'll be able to build and upgrade more facilities on your ship and your ship will be able to do more things. So if a, if a smaller vessel is, you know, maybe got like a, a small cannon or ballista or something on front and a sail and maybe an extra other thing on it, you're not going to be doing much other than the navigation and maybe a, that, a couple of other things. But if a larger ship has like four or five or six different things you can interact with, uh, maybe some of those things that you're building and interacting are going to take some of that navigation burden off you so you can interact with more of the th things on the ship and, and sort of scale that up to, to Colossal. So that's that's kind of how we're seeing this sort of progression through ships as, as you go along. Um, I think that we definitely want players to be able to have more than one, though. I think that's such a, such a fundamental part. Is We don't just want you to have, oh, you always have the biggest ship and it can always do the most stuff, and this is the perfect ship for all 
the activities in game. We want you to be able to have multiple different ships, uh, each one built for their each thing. We've even played around with the idea that what if like your colossal ship could just have sort of your 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 small ship sort of like attached to it at the side, and then at certain points we need to go and explore islands. You just like anchor up and take your your rowboat to the maybe the, the places that are more sort of uh, tightly sort of uh, like sort of what would you say narrower places to navigate. That kind of idea. Um, and as far as uh, like the different ships as well, we were playing around the idea of different types of sea. So maybe shallow sea is ideal for having these small vessels. Uh, just general open sea is suited for large vessels. And the deep sea is where you want to be using colossal vessels. And we probably just have some sort of penalty for using a ship that isn't quite optimized for it. It could be sort of like a movement speed penalty, but I, we, there's also the idea that just ha having less things available, especially on like a smaller ship, could just be the penalty in itself, right? If you've got a really small uh, single cannon and a large sea creature suddenly comes up and your ship maybe doesn't have a lot of health, it's maybe that is the penalty, that it's not going to be able to be able to deal with that threat as opposed to a specific uh, sort of arbitrary movement penalty. So we're, we're, these are all the things that we're talking about. And a lot of these examples that I've given are just to give context to the situation and describe the differences between the different sizes of ships. But from a navigation perspective and what we're refining right now, that's kind of what we're pitching, that we have three different tiers of ships, three different types of sea, and just sort of have that complexity of uh, controlling the ships and managing them increase as you, uh, as you sort of go up in size. Cool. Um, this is just a follow-up follow -up question from me. It may not be designed yet, but you imagine players would have one small ship, one medium, one large, and then they just work on customizing and upgrading that one ship? Or are you thinking um, they could have multiple versions of different sizes of ships and upgrade them depending on... That's like a far-out question. It might not be. But... I don't think I would necessarily want to restrict them to one small, one large, one colossal, unless there was a tech restriction meaning it had to be that way. Um, we obviously haven't started doing things like mapping player variables to ships and how complex that gets, but I'd ideally like players to just have a number of ships. And if they want five specific small ships, go ahead. If they want five sorry, larger ships, go ahead. Uh, and that kind of thing. We'd obviously expect having at least one of each is probably a good idea to sort of enable you to navigate all the varieties of sea more optimally. But all of these are just, like all of these are just ideas at this point, right? I think that one thing I've seen come up a lot with players is, oh, what do you think about this specific thing? How do you feel about this type of content at sea? And the question is that we're gonna sort of build to that over time. And we just want to give players the direction that we're heading in right now and how it relates to navigation so that we can get more specific and relevant feedback to sort of help have the community help us shape this skill into the skill that they, the best skill that it can be and, and the skill that they want. Awesome, fantastic explanation. Um, right, we've only got 15 minutes, so I'll, I'll run through the next ones really quickly. Um, how will players expect to get access to the sea? Have we kind of designed that in mind? Uh, just simply going to a port. Uh, one thing we've talked about a lot with sailing is the idea of sort of revamping ports around the world, making them a, a really, like, truly social hub. Uh, in old school RuneScape for the sailing activity and having them dotted all around across the game. We already have these ports, but they might need additional features to sort of support sailing. Uh, well, one thing we have also thought about is that if you're going to an island and from a lower perspective, it doesn't really make sense for there to be a port there. It's an undiscovered island. Why would it just have this fully functional port? We can have these sort of like mirroring points where you could dock your ship and then go explore and then come back to it. So you wouldn't necessarily be restricted to just ports, but either it would be either ports or specific designated locations. Um, we wouldn't want players to just sail freely and sort of drop off anywhere they want across the, the coast. While it sounds, it would sound nice, it gets very complicated for dealing with things like restrictions and access to content. Uh, one of the best examples is that players shouldn't have access to Taranwin unless they've done Underground Pass in uh, uh, that quest series. So. One of the cleanest ways of doing that is having that sort of single access point or access points like Port Terras, where we go, cool, have they done this quest? No, right, okay, now they're getting kind of shot at by the guards and told to go away because they don't trust, like, strangers. 
you know, to their land. <laughs> um, like that sort of thematic idea. And you would understand, okay, I can't dock there. And if we just allowed you to sort of, like, say, place your ship anywhere along the coast, it would get really complicated in all the checks and all the tiles. And, oh, can we dock here and that kind of thing. So, yeah, ports are just um, like a necessity for us from a implementation perspective to make it uh, easier to handle. Cool. Sorry for spamming you with questions. Um, let's talk about collision. I've seen a couple of people asking about that. Um, anyone can take this, but can you explain the ramifications of having many players at sea potentially colliding their boats and how that works on a technical or developmental level? Yeah, I think uh, where we're at, at the moment is it's just going to kind of work how players collide, which is that they don't um, when two boats intersect. Uh, the boat that's not your boat will just kind of become a shadow on the water. Because otherwise, gameplay-wise, that's just going to get really annoying. You don't want, like, some, I don't know, some clangers together and just creates, like, a blockade across, like, the entire <laughs> ocean and now you can't go anywhere. Like, that doesn't make any Makes, sense. Just that stamp would be up bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's where our thoughts are at the moment. Um... We, there were some interesting discussions as well about, um, you know, what if, like, could your boat crash into something um, and then, like, your boat would be damaged? Or is your boat always going to, like, pathfind through whatever obstacles you send it through? Um, so, yeah, that's all stuff we're thinking about. But as for, like, player collision, and maybe player collision would turn on if there's, like, PvP boat areas. Maybe. Or maybe it wouldn't. Yeah, we'd have to like experiment with that and, and figure it out. Yeah, I, I mean, think the so whole idea. Can you imagine? Sorry, Husky. I was just going to say it. So, can you imagine on launch day? Wherever we. I don't know where the like level one sailing hub would be at this point, but can you imagine? Everyone gets their first boat and the ships collide. And there's like a thousand players on one world. It just. <laughs> it wouldn't work. We have to. We have to get it. We have to get it right. Especially when like you imagine Bantica. players are one by one, right? What players are one by one? Uh, the GE, but the GE's busy. That's a lot of people. If you're on boats and it collided, like it just doesn't. It, it wouldn't really work. We'd have to limit it in some capacity. So it can maybe work, like Nin says, in specific activities. Uh, like if we did a raid down the line of boats, like hey, that could have totally different rules on some of this stuff to what regular sailing training and gameplay looks like, but. Uh, yeah, sorry, go on, Husky. No, that, that, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. And and even in the example of, say, PvP, I know that that's a scary topic right now, PvP boats at sea. Uh, that isn't something that we're ruling out, but it is something that... It depends on the entire content implementation, right? Like, I, there's probably, like, four or five different PvP ship ideas that we could pitch to the community, and, uh, like, they, they like one or they like none of them and that kind of thing, so... It's not something we're ruling out, but it absolutely feels like collision should exist there, right? The idea that I'm ramming my ship into someone else, we both take damage, sounds really cool. And yeah, as you said, like if there's specific content implementations where we're specifically testing your navigation skills to not collide with things, uh, we should probably turn it on and do that kind of thing. But even even when it comes to just scenery, I'm not a big fan of, I didn't quite get to my wheel in time in general navigation, and now my sit like crashed into land and is damaged. It feels like that element of realism that just detracts from gameplay meaninglessly, where it's like a simple mistake suddenly requires like a punishment on the player. Um, yeah. Awesome. It's awesome to hear your thoughts on that. Um... So I've seen a couple of people talking, making memes about feeling like ships might not be big enough to scale with the sea. I'm hoping the demo helped with that. Um, but curious to hear the panel here's thoughts on expanding the sea. Do we need the sea expanded to deal with maybe the influx of people that could be training sailing? Do you think that it, its size is good right now? So it comes down to content density at sea. And that's something we already surveyed players on, where we said, hey, would you like just very thinly spread content at sea, or would you like more fully developed areas? And we could just leave areas to be expanded upon later, and players were saying, yeah, we want more densely packed areas of actual content, and, uh, and the idea that there's like an early game sea area, like a few of those dotted around, and some more mid-game sea areas, and this part's dedicated to this content. So in terms of expanding the sea, if we have this sort of densely packed sea, it's already quite a large job to do the existing sea, let alone expanding it. 
Uh, there probably does still need to be some growth, uh, particularly, say, Fossil Island is right up against the very eastern sea, and Zaya is like five tiles off the edge of the western sea. So we probably want to expand it a bit more to allow you to sail around those and make it feel more, more immersive. Um, but as far as like sea scale in general, uh, the prototype itself was, you know, obviously just showing, hey, here's different sizes of ship, and hey, cool, look, here's multiplayer on a ship and whatnot. But I think players would have seen like that really large ship really close to land and go, oh my god, that that feels really strange. And people look at, well, there's Crandor really close to to land here, and I wouldn't fit a large ship there. And we're just going to have to be very clever about what we denote as being shallow sea, open sea, and deep sea. Right? We're going to have to make sure that players are using the appropriate sized uh, vessels for the area provided, and that would help to alleviate some of the sea scale problems. Because the truth is that Gilinor is already not very well put to scale. Look at the size of mountains compared to houses, compared to players, compared to the ships even at port, and you go, actually, that just isn't that just isn't to scale. And I don't think the game ever really tried to, right? It tried to just create this fun game world to sort of play in, and that's something that we're just going to continue on with, with sailing. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, right, in our last few minutes, um, sorry, Husky, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Um, how do you imagine winds and currents influencing navigation? These are things that have come up quite a lot in the, the Discord where we've been talking with players and there's definitely been a, a sentiment that we don't just want to have wind be something that is a negative, but I want to be able to, to like use my sails effectively to use wind as a positive and, and this kind of thing. And it is a question of do we include these mechanics and do we go with uh, sort of this part of realism in sailing? To me, the both of these make what is fundamentally sort of navigation at sea interesting. The idea that I have to drop my sails or put up my sails based on the wind, maybe there's slight uh, movement penalties for not doing it correctly, or like following a current helps you move faster or provides some other benefit. Um, these are things that we are definitely looking to explore. Uh, wind we've got as being a more sort of dynamic, you need to react to it. It's affecting everyone in the area at the same time, and those that can utilize it correctly will get a benefit from it. And currents are just this static thing in the game world where you know you're going to this era, you've discovered a current and you can manipulate that current or like to in the direct or so you can you know to go in the current if you're going this direction or to avoid it if you're going the other direction. Um, but when it comes to game design, while it's something oh my god, I've got to deal with wind and current and what is strong wind and going against a current and I can't deal with it. Um, we would definitely not want to overload these mechanics just from trying to stick to good game design early. If you're in shallows or like sort of near like land, we're probably good just going to have wind and no current. And even then the wind is probably going to be quite small to get players used to it as they're coming into the skill. And then when they move to open sea, maybe the wind is getting a bit more and uh, currents are now a thing, and, or you're maybe dealing with them in isolation. Right? We don't have high wind with strong currents, but when you get to the deep sea, now we've got like everything sort of coming together. and. While that might sound like it's getting like a lot to deal with in deep sea, and deep sea might just become frustrating, the thing that we would emphasize is that a colossal ship has more facilities to be able to deal with things, right? You're not a small rowboat in deep sea necessarily struggling to deal with both wind and current and not having options. A colossal ship would have more options potentially for, you know, like magically enchanted sails that react to the wind or something, or, um, like, or at least like partially react to the wind. Or, hey, like, I've got this really massive, like, ship with a reinforced hull that, like, and, and you could just think of, like, ways that sailing could could really just have things to help you deal with it. I think one of the things that we've played around the logs, how does magic play into it, right? If you just magically enchanted something, can it help lessen a mechanic or circumvent a mechanic? And is that if that's part of the skills progression, that just feels really good to be like, yes, I reached this break point. I'm now 82 sailing. Now I've unlocked this thing. That makes my life a bit easier to help deal with the other thing means i can focus on other things to see so i think that um all of these sort of ideas culminating uh to me like sailing as a skill like it, it provides so much room in terms of like unlocks and uh things you can progressively feel like as you're training the skill either your players getting better at dealing with it or your ship itself that you're you're helping to uh 
like sort of improved is getting better at dealing with it. Awesome. I think from this conversation, it's so clear that this is so much more than what sailing was originally proposed to be back way back when. And I do want to make it clear to the, the comments in chat, like this isn't just what sailing is. This is just the na navigational mechanics of sailing. We still have four gameplay and system loops, reward space, skill integration, area integration, lore. That is all still to come. And that's what we're going to build on. Um, this this navigational mechanics discussion is, is the core kind of foundation that we're building upon. So this isn't the entirety of the skill. This is just kind of where it begins. Um, and I just want to stress that, like, if you do have um, comments, like constructive criticism, we are all for it. We want to hear it. We want to want to hear what you have to say. Um, but make sure you, that you let us know what um, what constructive feedback that is, so that we can change it. We can um, build upon it and make it even better and improve it for you. Um, right, with Straight only a few up. minutes left to go. Yeah. I, I want to touch on that a little bit because there's still a lot of like sentiment around, hey, sailing isn't a skill. I think that's something that people still go, this all looks really good. I'm enjoying what you're seeing out there as content, but it's not a skill. And that was one of the reasons why we wanted core gameplay to come first initially when we'd had a look at it, right? Because being a skill involves having like a good core gameplay loop and progression systems, it ties into rewards. And we were very eager to sort of nip that in the bud and sort of just say, hey, here is how sailing can be a skill. And this is what it makes it a skill and to really make that convincing case. But player feedback was we want to, we, we just can't understand how being on the ship at sea is going to work. We can't understand what that is. Are you a ship? Is it WASD? Is it instanced? All of these kind of things. We were like, right, we have two problems that we need to solve to convince people that this is truly going to be an amazing piece of content to sort of, you know, we know there's already a ton of people who, who love sailing, but there are people who are skeptical. And that's where we said, well, it's okay to be skeptical. Allow us to bring you along the journey and to explain it. So, we have to do it piecemeal though. We cannot drop massive amounts of exposition and gameplay and all of these details because then it'll just get lost. So we've done navigation. There's gonna be a blog with a ton more information coming out tomorrow and some other uh, cool assets that are accompanying that. But give us a chance to get into core gameplay and rewards if you're still skeptical about sailing being a skill because that is the moment where we unpack that. So yeah, I understand where players might not think it's a skill right now, that is fine, but I think that I would just ask people to just stick with us on this journey. So keep your mind open, and if at the end of refinements you're still not convinced it's a skill, like let us know. Like what would it take to what would it take to make you feel like it's a skill? Like that is that is really valuable feedback and information, but it's something that we need. We're we're we're, we're going to get to. That's what we're trying to overcome and, and sort of make you believe because we definitely see it as a skill internally we absolutely see that sailing is content worthy of being a skill we just but it's the problem is it's all in our heads internally and what we've shared in internal comms we just need to get that out to you guys as the players so yeah uh hopefully that kind of addresses that because i didn't want to just leave that as a when it was such a prevalent thing i guess in the chat coming up absolutely um yeah, I, I don't want to come across as dismissive to anyone when they when they give feedback, and I, I don't want to make them feel as though their feedback isn't valued. Um, so if you aren't a fan yet, absolutely fine. I would urge you guys to join the Discord and, and send us your feedback and just explain to us what we can do to um, improve the skill if, if you're not a fan at the moment. I hope that the demo, though, proved a lot of people's misconceptions perhaps wrong. Maybe have a, a second look at the skill. Um, but let us know what you like, let us know what you don't like. Um, we'll spam the Discord link at the end of the stream. I think it, you can get it with exclamation mark Discord. Um, but yeah, the whole point of this new process is to shape it with you, um, to get people that may not be on board, no pun intended, <laughs> on board. Um, and I did see a comment about shamanism as well. We did say in a blog post that we were going to be looking at refining shamanism no matter the outcome of sailing. Um, so that shouldn't be a concern at this stage, um, but we're focusing on refining sailing because of the fact that this is the skill we've chosen to move forward uh, from the skill pitcher stage. So um, thank you so much, chat. Um, I think we are ready to round off the stream. Um, 
Thank you to our wonderful panel, Kieran Husky Nen. Uh, any final thoughts before we close off the stream? Just make sure to read the blog tomorrow. Uh, we've tried to cover as much information about navigation as we can through this format. But the primary focus of this stream was to highlight this really amazing tech demo that was done by the engine team. Uh, so there should be a lot more about navigational mechanics coming up over the next few days. So please keep tuned, please keep in tune for that. If you watch the stream, you still don't even have all the information about navigation. And that just sort of hopefully reinforces what I was saying by we've got a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah, you, you, what you're saying is that as an amazing foundation and the next stuff that comes up in the next couple of weeks will be, well, all right, now how does your character actually gain XP? How does your character get better at sailing? What do you do to train sailing? What do you do when you're out at sea? And, and so on, all this gameplay stuff that will really deliver on the this is the skill element, I think, will be coming then. Um, but first we had to work out how do you move around the ocean? And all these basic fundamentals that you don't have to do on land because walking's already there, right? We kind of got to establish this basic framework. And I think it's incredible to have what we've got. Um, and you'll see the video again, I believe. And if you haven't, there's the YouTube link in the chat as well. But like that is the very early prototype of what this could be. Who knows what water might look like? Who knows what the boats themselves might look like? All this stuff is to come. And... It's super exciting because this is the start of that journey, really. Not yeah, the end. Yeah. I agree with everything I said. I think um, I think sailing as a skill is like, it sounds quite simple, and hopefully we can get it to play in quite a simple way. But as you know, everything that Husky was talking about, there's a lot of depth for us to explore there, which is really really cool. Absolutely. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. We will round off. We'll say goodbye with the, um, the MP4 that we showed at the beginning, the demo. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe on our YouTube channel if you want to, if you're feeling generous. Um, and the final words for me is just that we would like to thank you so far for your feedback. Um, even getting to this place hasn't been possible without all of your feedback. Um, we really enjoy engaging with you, um, shaping the skill with you, um, and we're genuinely excited for what's to come. So. Thank you so, so much. Um, thank you to all the positivity as well in chat. We see it, we appreciate it. Um, it makes all the hard work worth it. Um, and when the blog releases, I'm aiming for tomorrow. It may be Wednesday, not sure yet, but when that blog releases, please do let us know what you think about it. Um, we are open to making changes. Um, so yeah, please do send your love and constructive feedback. Um, and yeah, I, I heard someone burping, but I, I think that was someone behind the scenes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that really threw me off. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, all right. Play the clip. <laughs> <laughs> that was so upsetting. Play the clip. Hey, all. I'm Mod Nin, joined by Mod Elena to give you a first look at our early exploration into sailing tech. As you hopefully know by now, the old school team is working on a brand new skill and shaping it with the community during refinement. Sailing was taken forward as the first skill we'd like to refine further, so our first step will be nailing down the navigational mechanics of sailing. Before we get started, please be aware that this demo is purely a technical showcase. There are no gameplay mechanics here, and the art is far from final, but this video is intended to show you more about the tech and challenge some of the misconceptions players might have around what is technically possible for us to do. So, let's jump into it. Boats are a familiar concept in old school. They're all over the place once you start looking, from tiny rowboats to Fremenic longboats to huge merchant vessels that travel continents. You've seen them, you've boarded them, You've smuggled rum on them, so captaining them shouldn't feel out of place as a skill you could master. Sailing in old school needs to feel well integrated, intuitive, and familiar, and that's where our technical exploration started. We already have boats, we just need to make them move. Here you can see a small boat with a body and a sail, and a player stood inside. 
That player is able to do regular interactions while on the boat and see other players doing activities on the dock. This player is also in control of the boat and can use point and click movement to traverse the waters. Please note this movement and control scheme are not final, but we're using it here to demonstrate how a player can be part of a moving entity. That boat's a little cramped though. Let's give our guy a bigger vessel. This one's got quite a bit more room. Maybe to carry a treasure chest, or some fishing supplies, or enough space to bring a pet. Maybe this boat is a bit more durable, or can carry more cargo. The specifics of what utilities boats will have is not decided yet, but they can contain interactable objects like anywhere else in the game. We also think sailing could make for a fun group activity. We want to let you invite your friends aboard so you can sail the high seas together. On even larger ships, you might need a whole crew working together to man the cannons, hoist the sails, keep lookout, and steer safely through the waves. We're able to have groups of players aboard boats, which could open up lots of gameplay opportunities for multiplayer sailing content. What did you guys think? We'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below, or if you're watching this live, tell us in the chat. We'd once again like to say that this video footage is purely a technical demo. The core gameplay details, art, rewards, basically everything that makes a skill a skill is still to come. Knowing how navigation works at its core is really important as it feeds into all the other aspects of the skill. We know how important it is to ensure that navigation feels fun, engaging and intuitive across all devices. So now that you're able to visualize yourself on a ship with your homies, what kinds of feedback do you want to send our way?